My name is Corey Searcy. I'm uh, an associate professor and director of the Industrial Engineering Program at Ryerson University in Toronto, Canada. Uh, our first question for you would be, uh, from your experience and research, which do you think are the main challenges that organizations have to face when implementing a performance management mm. system? Um, well, I think one of the key challenges that organizations face now is dealing with the data overload that many of them are, uh, are confronted with. You know, over the last five to ten years, really, the amount of data that's available to organizations has exploded, and the cost of acquiring that data in many cases is, has come down substantially. And uh, because of that, I think one of the challenges is you know, figuring out what your key priorities really are, rather than focusing on trying to measure everything. Right? When, when all this data is available uh, and relatively cheap to acquire, there may be a tendency to overmeasure. I think in some cases, and rather than focusing on measuring absolutely everything that you can, I think it makes more sense to identify a few core priority areas and really focus on those and, and getting the metrics or the indicators right for those few core areas. Even measuring uh, the costs and the benefits of having so many indicators? Um, well, there are both costs and benefits to having more indicators. And in some cases, it may make sense to have uh, a large number of indicators, not necessarily hundreds, but you know, more than a couple of dozen, depending on the type of organization. I think if you're uh, an organization that's under pressure to demonstrate that you're doing something about certain issues, there probably is a tendency to measure more. Right? So for example, if you think of large uh, utilities, uh, organizations that may be very prominent in the public eye, uh, crown corporations uh, that are government owned, for example, they may be under more pressure to demonstrate that they're actually doing something about issues. And in those cases, it may make sense to collect more indicators. Uh, but in general, I think it makes sense rather to have a, a more concise set. Uh, th there's no fixed number. I mean, it depends on the, the organization and the challenges that they're facing at that time. But the risk in having too many indicators is that, uh, you know, the important things may get lost. Right? If, you're, if you're measuring 200 things, uh, you, you may look at you know, this list of 200 things and miss the, miss the ones that are truly important. Right? So it's about finding out uh, you know, what, what are really our key priority areas, right? what's important to this organization, rather than focusing on measuring absolutely everything they're capable of doing so. Right? It's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to measure things that um, you know, aren't important to you or that you're not going to use in decision making or that your stakeholders aren't interested in. So there is that trade-off between cost and benefit, right? but uh, and certainly it's, it's very expensive and time consuming to, to collect the data, to analyze the data, to report on it. So you know, there, there's those obvious considerations as well. Mm. Um, well, one of the things that I specifically focus on is sustainability performance measurement. And uh, you know, certainly we're seeing more and more companies choose to disclose sustainability indicators in publicly available reports. And uh, I mean, that's a trend that's been, been going on probably for about a decade, maybe even a little bit longer. But we're starting to see that accelerate, at least amongst the largest companies. Um, small companies tend not to report too much on those things in general, but large companies we're seeing them report on sustainability issues more and more and as a part of that reporting they're developing sustainability indicators that they're choosing to share. Um, that said, you know, there is no real standardization of those indicators. There are supporting guidelines like the Global Reporting Initiative to support that process, but as yet there's still a lot of debate about exactly what companies should be reporting with respect to sustainability issues. So, you know, one of the trends I've noticed, of course, is that there is more reporting in this area, um, but there still are ongoing questions about what should be reported and how it should be reported. Right? Certainly the traditional metrics are still there. Right? Companies are obligated to report on their financial information in their, their publicly available annual reports, and, you know, that information is there. Even in the annual reports, we're probably seeing a little bit more of the environmental and social issues seeping into them. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the majority of reports by any means, but I think more and more we're seeing companies move to a more integrated reporting structure, where in addition to that standard financial information in the income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow, statement of retained earnings, yeah, we're seeing more non-financial indicators included in even the annual report, in addition to perhaps producing a standalone sustainability or corporate responsibility report. 
So I think that that trend will likely continue, um, but uh, I still think we're a ways away from standardizing that information. Right? I, don't, I don't think that's likely to happen in the next year or two. Um, maybe beyond that, in five to ten years, we may see a limited set of standardized environmental and or social metrics or indicators that the companies are required to report on. Uh, but of course, that's going to vary widely from jurisdiction to jurisdiction as well. But uh, in any case, I think we'll see more reporting on environmental and social issues. Uh, from your experience and your research, if you are to give three pieces of advice to companies in order to help them implement a successful, efficient, effective performance management system, which would uh, this advice be? Hmm. Well, uh, the key is again to focus on what's truly important, right? Uh, if you're a mining company and you're reporting on environmental indicators, the most important things are, you know, what are you doing about the hole in the ground and all of the stuff that's created associated with that. It's not about how many sheets of paper you're recycling, right? So that may be interesting, but that's not a critical measure for a mining company. So focus on the, the core issues at the center of your business. Um, the other main advice I would offer is when you're looking at whether an indicator is going to be uh, something that you adopt or not, to ask a couple of questions. Uh, one is, is this going to be useful in managing the business? And the second is, uh, is this something that our stakeholders are truly interested in? If the answer to both of those questions is yes, then it probably makes sense to collect the indicator as long as the cost is not prohibitive and you, you're capable of measuring that particular issue. If the answer is yes to one of them, then you've got a choice to make. Right? You've got to weigh those costs and benefits of collecting the indicators. Uh, if the answer is no to both of them, then you need to ask yourself if this is something we should really be collecting. Right? Perhaps there's a mandatory requirement to do so, and if, if so, of course. But if there's no mandatory requirement to do so, you're not going to use it in decision making. It's not something of interest to your stakeholders. That's probably an indicator you don't need to look too closely at. Aligning the entire performance Oh, yes. Um, okay, yeah, I, I think that um, it's important to have some degree of alignment. I don't think that the performance measurement system necessarily needs to be completely aligned. Um, you know, I, I like to think of uh, the development of performance measurement systems in terms of hierarchies, right? So if you think of a, a, a large business or a large corporation, uh, they may have uh, indicators at the, the, uh, the department level, they may have indicators at the business unit level, they may have indicators at the corporate level, right, that feed into the strategic plan, for example. And you have to remember that different people may be using different indicators at different levels in the organization, right? So uh, people at the, at the uh, department level don't necessarily need to see all the information that those at the business unit or at the corporate level would need to see, and vice versa. Uh, but that said, there should still be some alignment in that, um, to some extent, they should feed into each other. So if, if there's something that's really important to the corporation, right, like there's a particularly critical issue, you would expect to see some alignment probably at each level, right? Um, but you may see a lack of alignment in some cases where, for again, maybe there's mandatory reporting requirements where some information needs to be collected at that business unit or lower or operational level. Uh, that doesn't necessarily make its way up to the strategic level, right? Uh, but indicators that appear at the strategic level, you would hope to some extent filter down to the lower levels, even though they may appear in slightly different forms, right? Um, so yes, I, I think there should be some alignment, right? I don't think you would want to have a completely disaggregated system that's uh, completely unaligned, but there may also be cases where you don't necessarily need to worry about aligning everything. Right? And I, I think a good example of that is if, if you're required to report on a number of mandatory things, um, maybe those go to the top level depending on what the issue is. Maybe not. Maybe it's just at that the operational level that it's collected and reported on an ongoing basis. Um, but uh, again, the key is to uh, you know, focus on the, the use of the system, how it's actually going to be used in practice, and to design a system uh, that, that works for the organization. Right? The last thing you want to do is develop a bunch of indicators that aren't going to be used at, in decision making at any level, right? So um, the key, I think, is to focus on how is this actually going to be used? How is this going to inform uh, decision making or communication with our stakeholders or perhaps some other use? But making sure that you're not just collecting the information for the sake of collecting it, that this is something that we're actually going to use, we're going to do something with this. And, uh, 
you know, that's kind of the, the overall guide. And uh, when you're thinking about alignment, it's really well, what is the information that people at these various levels, whether you're thinking about it from the department, business unit, or uh, corporate level, or you're thinking about strategic or operational or project level, or however you want to think about it, what's the information that these, these people need? And uh, uh, again, what's of interest to stakeholders? And uh, you know, those are really the guiding questions that I would use in, uh, in designing the, the system, whether you're talking about an alliance system or not. Thank you. Um, could you please give me some example of companies um, that are worth looking at due to their particular approach to performance management and, of course, due to their results? Um, <laughs> Yeah, again, most of my work is in the area of uh, sustainability performance measurement. And uh, there, there are a number of companies that, that do well on reporting. Um, so, for example, in Canada, uh, the, a telecommunications company, TELUS, has won a number of awards for their uh, sustainability reporting. And as a part of that, they, they report on a number of sustainability indicators that often have goals and targets associated with them, which is a good thing. Um, one of the challenges, however, in, in sustainability reporting is that uh, you know, disclosure is not necessarily the same thing as performance. So the fact that companies may have a lot of indicators doesn't necessarily mean they're, they're performing well. And that's not to say that TELUS isn't performing well. They, they may well be doing so. Um, but it's not so easy to assess whether they're performing well from a sustainability perspective for a couple of reasons. One is that there's often a lack of connection to the broader context within which the organization operates, right? So if you're talking about something like sustainability indicators or measuring sustainability, um, you know, one of the key principles in the Global Reporting Initiative, a widely known standard for reporting, is that the performance needs to be linked to the broader uh, context within which the organization operates, right? So uh, how is the environment and society affected at the local, regional, and global levels? But there's not a whole lot of explicit reporting on that right now. And in the absence of that, it's very difficult to assess how well a company is actually performing from a sustainability perspective. Right? Because sustainability really is about linking to that broader context. Like sus sustainability is a global concept, right? So you, you need to have that, that link to that context within which you operate. And if that's absent, it can be challenging to assess how companies are truly doing. Um, in the absence of those types of indicators, what you wind up with are mainly absolute and efficiency-oriented indicators, uh, which are very useful, uh, but they're largely self-referential. So you're measuring your performance relative to yourself. So you've made incremental improvements or things have worsened slightly incrementally. But you don't necessarily know what that means, right? right? What does that mean from a sustainability perspective? So let's say we've improved our, our we've reduced our emissions of carbon dioxide by 2%. Well, that's a good thing, but does that mean we're sustainable or not? And you, you can't answer that question without reference to that broader sustainability context. So uh, there are a lot of companies that, that do a great job on sustainability reporting. Uh, you know, TELUS being one in Canada, uh, you know, Potash has won a number of awards for reporting. Suncor, an oil and gas company, has won reporting awards. Um, but there's, there's still that challenge of linking to the broader context. And um, uh, that's something that I think we need to work on if we're looking at something like sustainability reporting. Um, could you give me an example, be besides this, what you, what you just said, could you give me another example of an area in performance measurement, in sustainability um, and performance measurement that could be prone to further research hmm. that could need, actually? Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's a lot of room for future research in sustainability performance measurement. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think one of the challenges is, for example, measuring uh, sustainability performance in the supply chain, right? So if you're looking at something like supply chain performance measurement, and this could apply even beyond sustainability, right? Just looking at supply chain performance measurement, one of the key challenges is aligning data collection and uh, reporting systems across the chain, right? And if you don't have the data and it's, it's, it's not collected and reported in the same way across the chain consistently, you can't report at the supply chain level. Right? So I think one potential avenue for future research could be looking at uh, reporting more at the supply chain level. And it doesn't mean you would have a, a huge number of indicators. It's probably not going to be possible given the difficulty of collecting that information and aligning that information across the chain. But if you, if you look at what your key issues are in the supply chain and develop a couple or one even core 
indicator or a couple of core indicators uh, to capture that, uh, that would be quite useful. But again, it, it, really, it really requires that, that alignment in data collection and reporting across the entire chain to get something like that right. And uh, uh, that's tough. And uh, you know, certainly some companies have made efforts to report on their supply chain performance, but it's not easy. And uh, I think that would be an interesting avenue of future research, but I mean, there's many, many others. So. But this is the field you are... Uh... Yeah, that's why I use that example, because uh, I mean, I, I work more in sustainability performance measurement systems. And uh, one of the areas that I am actually looking at uh, over the next couple of years is this, this exact example, looking at uh, you know, reporting at the level of the supply chain. And uh, the other issue is uh, looking at indicators that address or link to that broader sustainability context within which the organization and or the supply chain operates. So I, I think there's uh, quite a bit of room for further work in that area. Are there any final considerations you would like to add about performance management or sustainability performance measurement? Uh, well, I, I think the key thing is to, to keep in mind that the, the system needs to work for the organization that's um, uh, going to be employing the system. So. Uh, I, would, uh, I would guard against taking a system that's been used elsewhere and necessarily just dropping it into yours. Right? So that's not to say that you can't learn from what others have done. Certainly you can. But um, I, I do think that the system needs to be tailored to the unique context within which it's going to be used. And uh, you, know, you should be cautious against uh, directly importing something from somewhere else. It's not to say it, it, it won't work, but um, it's not a guarantee that it will either. Right? So, Learn from others, but make sure that the, you know, the performance measurement system is tailored to the unique needs of those in the organization and, and how they're going to actually use it in practice. And that use could vary from organization to organization, and as a result, your system may need to be a little bit different. So. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much.